Okay, we're running. Okay, good afternoon. So um, we are gathered here uh, yeah, this uh, day uh, to talk about uh, an uncertainty. So the title of this uh, presentation, a slap sheet towards a bit frame, an overview of our current possibilities, um, is in a real sense for the Evergreen Project a discussion of the possibilities and the possibilities only. You know, there's one of the nice things about BitFrame as opposed to you know some of the past 15 or 20 years of uh, the linked, the semantic web slash Larry linked data dream is that nowadays there are actually concrete uh, BitFrames, uh, BitFrame implementations you can point to. However, none of them exist in Evergreen as you date, um, and largely speaking, um, unless you are the likes of uh, NYPL, um, none of those, those are, are yet in a position, position where they touch uh, on the day-to-day -day, um, life of uh, the public library or consortial uh, cataloger. Um, and of course, um, one of the consequences of the history of a bit frame is uh, that the shortest way uh, for me to elicit a groan uh, from uh, the catalogers um, working uh, interest group is uh, to wander into uh, one of uh, our meetings and whisper the word uh, bit frame because you know there are um, some real uh, concerns and issues so i'm going to start a bit uh, out of order um, so, you know, so why this bit frame, uh, you know, a thing uh, that uh, we're discussing? And of course, it's all the uh, fault of the, the, uh, right of the right tenant. Love you, Roy. Love you, Roy. Uh, but uh, but um, um, Mark Gamasai um, was uh, the title of uh, a uh, famous uh, uh, talk, or what is famous in library land, which is famous enough uh, for an, uh, for anybody. Um, presentation uh, about um, the failures of uh, the MARC standard in uh, the modern uh, information technology environment. Um, um, and, and certainly his presentation um, reflects um, the common programmer level view of the MARC you know, format as being Perfectly appropriate uh, for its genesis uh, in the sixties, sixties, um, um, you know, you know, under uh, the aegis of uh, Henrietta Avram, um, but where um, it is no longer a good fit um, for the possibilities accorded by our much greater computing power um, and networked uh, environment. So the assumptions back in the day um, that string matching, even very carefully specified uh, string matching based on the nickel normalization algorithm was appropriate to do things like manage authority I control in an efficient fashion. Uh, result for the uh, technologist and a lot of uh, gray hairs. Um, well, that too uh, for the catalogers. Um, and um, aspects like the way that fixed fields are used Perfectly, perfectly appropriate in the memory constrained COBOL based environments of uh, the 60s. Um, but now we have um, 
you know, much more memory that you play with uh, and better ways of maintaining controlled vocabularies and coding. Um, and if we had a better way of uh, describing that data, we could potentially make much more use of it in computerized systems beyond what's feasible uh, with uh, Mark. Um, that said, I don't want to uh, downplay um, some of the advantages of MARC, particularly as a cataloging as standard, um, because as much of uh, a barrier to entry it might be for the new cataloger, the new cataloger there is uh, the efficiency of the three-digit uh, tag actually cannot be underestimated in terms of cataloging discourse and uh, precision. So I will find it really interesting if and when the mark record truly dies and everybody's uh, speaking in linked data uh, terms, how people will actually uh, be doing their professional discourse. Um, you know, the, you know, you know, in most RDF or XML serializations, the efficiency uh, of saying the 245 or the 655 is hard to beat. But of course, the point of Mark Mastai wasn't particularly uh, about uh, just the uh, electronic, uh, record, electronic format record format or, or the interchange. interchange. Uh, this um, morphed uh, in discussion over a much broader uh, discussion about the way to reconce reconceptualize bibliographic uh, description and to apply it uh, to areas uh, that are not about books and will never uh, resemble a books. Um, and I suppose leading to the dream of catalogers and archival and archivists sitting together in peace uh, in one house, which I will be happy to observe over here. Uh, but you know, more seriously, um, that is also something. There's also something to keep in mind about BibFrame and the general discussion about our data is that, in theory, the interchange format or the description uh, or the underlying technology doesn't matter, except when it uh, does. Um, and again, we get and that. Again, we get back to fundamental, fundamental efficiency of. of the mark record as an input mechanism, which is difficult uh, to onboard uh, to, wait, that's an awkward uh, phrase, difficult to learn, but once you've uh, become proficient uh, in it, uh, beats uh, all of the current bit frame editors uh, that have ever, uh, you know, that have been seen uh, to date. But like I said, I started this uh, out of order, you know, what the heck is a bit frame? Um, and fundamentally, it's um, a model for bibliographic uh, description, uh, as well as description of other cultural materials. It builds in assumptions, you know, that it's at, uh, at its uh, core, um, you know, using linked uh, data vocabularies, uh, an RDF uh, description, um, and, um, but, you know, the uh, but, Corvid you know, is a data uh, model, is a data model in one sense, kind of a evolution of a fervor, where, where what we're what ultimately we're dealing with, with is entities um, that uh, we can uh, point to in the weird virtual bibliographic sense of works, instances of works, instances of those works, of those works embodiments of, of the you know, works uh, as uh, items, and then the agents uh, that are involved in those works and of course uh, subjects uh, and topics. But the notion of um, BibFrame is that at its core, it's the data model uh, that matters. Um, and in theory, um, um, these guys the is limited, uh, in terms, terms of uh, the ways it uh, could be serialized. But of course, um, given that BibFrame is an outreach of longstanding semantic web uh, and linked data technologies, um, most of the time you will be, uh, you know, ultimately serializing it uh, in RDF. But that uh, kind of linky um, 
view of the world um, suggests an amplification of Reutemann's um, um, point. Um, point. Um, um, what Debbie Frame uh, and you know its uh, predecessors uh, are really saying is that um, records uh, must die. So the idea of a marked record um, in one sense can be viewed as a document saying a bunch of things uh, about the literary or bibliographic um, entity that it's uh, describing. Um, Bibframe is much more focused on the relationships, um, you know, works uh, to instances, how works are related, how works are related to the agents, agents involved, involved uh, in producing them, uh, as well as the subjects uh, that uh, are, uh, are described. described. Um, and so the notion, uh, you know, is that um, in terms of interchange, you're not talking about, um, you know, flinging market records around uh, willy nilly as uh, discrete uh, documents, um, but that uh, you're extracting and then doing something with um, portions of a knowledge uh, graph that in theory encode all for the possible bibli uh, bibliographic relationships uh, in the universe. Uh, of course, most of the time we're not quite that ambitious. Um, but you know, the principle at least is that um, we can move forward uh, from purely library specific uh, concerns uh, to being able to do meta, you know, metadata, you know, uh, um, at, you know, uh, and smash and grabs uh, from other you know communities that have uh, you know metadata of interest uh, to libraries. So one of the things um, that's interesting about this is cataloging standards um, discussions do not happen in the fast lane. Um, so you know. You know, when I created this first slide, um, I realized uh, that I was starting to feel really, really, really old um, because it was because it was over years twenty ago, years ago um, when, when uh, Roy, uh, you know, made uh, this uh, you know Mark Mastaya presentation, and of course, you know, in a comparison, I'm quite young to the people who remember uh, you know things like the uh, transition. Uh, from AACR to AACR2, and then AACR3, oops, I mean RDA, and uh, you know the many years of the discussion that um, came out. So you know uh, it took you know you know ten years uh, for Bitframe to emerge, but of course that ten years uh, you know was almost entirely filled uh, with uh, seminars and AOA uh, sessions. Uh, you know, tearing the uh, you know through the various possibilities of uh, the semantic uh, web and linked uh, data. And by the way, a very important thing to keep in mind um, is it's you know if libraries uh, uh, adopt uh, you know linked uh, data uh, and RDF in a big way, that will actually leave libraries and related uh, institutions as one of uh, the primary users of what uh, Tim Berners-Lee back in the day would have called the semantic web. Now, now that's, that's not, not to say that libraries are, are alone. There are lots of, uh, are lots of institutions, institutions that do use that RTF, RTF and that do uh, produce uh, linked uh, data. But realistically, in terms of uh, most of the modern information technology, linked data, data is its own, own island, island uh, in a much uh, broader sea. Um, so, and it has both its uh, good aspects and bad aspects. Um, the bad aspect is that um, you can't just pluck any random uh, developer. Uh, and expect uh, that uh, they'll have an intimate uh, knowledge of RDF. It is not that uh, common of uh, a technology. But on the other hand, you know, we're, libraries aren't alone in that. And being able to um, be in a relatively constrained uh, community potentially gives uh, us a greater freedom uh, to do what we need to, to do with it. Um, but it's important to know that, that, to know that one of the early, early dreams, dreams of, 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 of our data, data 
that we would magically be able to gain access to a lot of bibliographic description that other entities were creating and publishing out in the world for, uh, for uh, everybody to crawl um, didn't really pan out. Um, um, we, uh, as, a, as the library metadata community, catalogers and information technologists uh, working hand in hand are still fundamentally uh, on our own. Um, though, fortunately, the people using linked data for research, uh, data management, and so on are now uh, potentially our partners in this. Um, but you know, so but this is part of me making sure not to oversell this. Uh, um, and of, and course, of course, um, you know, BitFrame One was in effect its own AACR three. Um, you know, in twenty sixteen, BitFrame two point uh, came out. And more research and the Library of Congress has been huge in actually doing the experimentation uh, with a bib frame, which by no means was a guaranteed. Um, and, you know, well, I presume uh, that uh, Carla uh, 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 Hayden did not um, directly, you know, on her second day say, thou shalt uh, start a series of bib frame work. Um, I do honestly think um, that uh, her leadership as uh, you know, the uh, current librarian of uh, Congress very likely was an enabler uh, for Elsie to uh, step up uh, to uh, the plate here. And of course, in 2022, uh, the Library of Congress uh, announced moving to an open source uh, solution folio that uh, you know, is designed from uh, the ground up uh, to be based on uh, linked open data and offers uh, LC um, a platform uh, for managing uh, BitFrame data directly, as opposed to the rather extreme amount of uh, crosswalking uh, that uh, they're doing uh, currently. Um, and so one of uh, the consequences of that is that um, there are you know, much more tools uh, nowadays um, available for anybody uh, who wants to lean on all of this experimentation and research uh, to actually start uh, playing around uh, with the bib frame. Um, and if you can, um, you know, work through getting a running folio system, um, you know, put it together. Um, and for some of the old, uh, you know, hands and the Evergina community, at last, uh, we have uh, something uh, harder to install than Evergreen was at that one uh, code for lib uh, pre-conference, um, probably 15 uh, years ago. Um, but in any event, um, you know, there are now possibilities um, that uh, can lead uh, to production uh, use of the bib frame, or at least experimentation that will look like uh, production use. Um, and this uh, gives uh, an opportunity uh, for us in the Evergreen community uh, to have a head start on experimentation um, um, in part uh, because the Evergreen community is uniquely positioned uh, to fill a huge gap uh, in uh, the way that uh, BitFrame is uh, being discussed uh, nowadays. All right, so, you know, why would we even consider adopting a bid frame? Um, so there is a, a you know, real sense of the tide of history. Um, I don't know how long Roy Tennant uh, was expecting the mark format to last. Um, it, well, he was probably not hoping for it to, to last uh, this uh, long. Um, you know, he may have had some hopes uh, that, uh, that um, we would be, uh, be able to go along. Um, and the issues um, that I'm pointing out uh, with uh, the mark format are real issues. Uh, you know, in an information, uh, you know, uh, you know, in a system where you want to load and ingest the mark records, you know, it's a you know delicate system that um, you know does not play well with uh, web uh, concepts and while the catalogers conspiracy 
to create discovery layers, discovery layers to, point to point out problems and dispatches, dispatches in, in fixed fields, fields has succeeded. Um, that doesn't make um, the data maintenance uh, or data cleanup uh, any uh, easier. Um, and so that is, uh, of course, really the potential, a bigger potential for BigFrame that in a environment that is set up to promote sharing and interchange of assertions about bibliographic concepts, um, the maintenance of data in your local catalog or entry point into this bibliographic universe in principle, in principle could get could a lot easier, easier. Um, um, if um, your data is expressing relationships um, Say you know subject uh, you know relation uh, topic of relationships and and you know you realize that your patron population has enough uh, Spanish speakers that you really ought to say have uh, Spanish language access uh, points uh, to uh, your catalog. In principle, linked data could make it super easy to fold um, the Spanish uh, subject uh, terms into uh, your catalog in a way that would be much more difficult uh, to manage uh, with uh, the MARC uh, format. Um, and of course, there's also the longer term trend that, um, you know, Evergreen, you know, you know has its uh, origins uh, in a large statewide resource sharing system where the resources uh, being shared were largely books uh, and at the time, you know, videos and DVDs, presumably. Uh, I forget exactly when the DVD uh, format uh, came out, but physical stuff. But all libraries, even the tiny public uh, uh, libraries nowadays, do have potential access to much more content in the way of electronic resources, as well as much more potential to want to and to be able to do things that capture and catalog digital images for local history collections uh, and uh, to um, expand um, the universe um, beyond just book uh, and uh, book-like uh, things. Um, so there is uh, you know, real potential um, in the linked data model if uh, we can but uh, take advantage of it. Um, and Again, you know, I don't expect that the big five publishers uh, will publishers be, um, be um, you know, you know, sending out uh, uh, publishing perfectly correct uh, RDF uh, of the, their catalogs anytime soon. Um, I expect that they, if, that they, if that they try it, it will be um, about as high quality as vendor uh, provided uh, market records. But um, being able to interact more with non library institutions and select non-GLAM institutions, um, you know, could be useful. And in theory, um, something to make uh, the library director's heart uh, go pit a hat, give a way to, in a more cost-effective uh, fashion, over time, provide a better, meta, uh, a better metadata. But uh, there all, are also reasons for waiting. Um, so one reason is uh, because the BibFrame Initiatives FAQ itself says um, you should wait. It's far from an environment that you uh, could uh, move uh, that you could uh, move to uh, yet. So okay, there we go. We're done. Presentation over. Uh, they say uh, we uh, should uh, wait. Um, but yeah, that's, that's of course uh, a double-edged uh, sword um, because the real meaning uh, behind that is um, that um, there's, there's an opportunity. opportunity to experiment and get in on uh, the discussion. Um, but of course, um, a complicated thing is that um, it's not like it's a fully fleshed out standard in the sense that um, there's a clear and coherent version of what it means for a, a library service platform or an iOS to support BibFrame. No, we can certainly point at bits and bits and pieces of it of being able to ingest, uh, you know, BibFrame uh, RDF assertions, being able to do something to index them, um, have some way to edit relationships, and so on and so forth. Um, but we're not yet at the point um, where there's uh, a clear consensus of a model of how this will all work. 
uh, and how this will all work um, if what you have at your library uh, is the director um, with, um, you know, who may actually have that cataloging experience, um, but maybe has uh, a twentieth uh, of uh, an hour each a day to uh, deal with cataloging in conjunction with um, the clerks uh, who will be so who will be bringing, bringing uh, records, records uh, into, into uh, uh, the assertion platform. platform. And so there's a lot more bit frame tolling than there was, but uh, you know, and it's grown all the time, fortunately. But there are still limited uh, tools. Um, like I said, no clear consensus. Um, and at the moment, um, adopting BitFrame means increasing your expenditure. Your expenditure if you're a public, if you're a public library, library uh, or, or an average an consortium. Um, so you know, you can't say to your uh, director that hey, it is a short thing that um, by adopting BitFrame. I will increase the productivity of the cataloging team by 200% uh, or decrease costs uh, by, you know, you know, you know, 10% or anything like that. It's a very much experimental technology. Um, and uh, for any of you who are talking with um, the likes of Archive or Backstage at Library Works, um, they have ideas. They honestly want to help um, and, you know, you, you know uh, yeah, and uh, you know, you, know, you, know, you can engage uh, them in discussion, but it, they do not yet have canned and potted the services um, that are um, easy to per uh, to uh, deal with. And of course, who has been driving the big frame uh, discussion? Um, largely um, academic and national libraries. And while those libraries do have real problems of scale of the metadata that uh, they need uh, to manage, um, you, you know, one of the benefits of, say, NACO membership is you do not get um, a Library of Congress cataloger to personally come uh, to your library to manage uh, your metadata for you. Um, so, not, you know, so there's a big gap um, in you know, public library represent, representation in bit frame uh, discussions. Um, and then, of course, questions about the, the rest of uh, the uh, ecosystem. Um, because I would be thrilled uh, if uh, somebody corrected me here, um, but I'm not uh, anticipating that um, the publishers or the book uh, trade will be of uh, much or any help by here. All right, so this is your opportunity to truly make my day uh, here, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Um, so uh, again, a case of the tools are uh, getting better, um, but um, Mark uh, to BitFrame and vice versa, you know, still requires uh, you know a significant uh, amount of work uh, to get right. And if you st thought discovery systems uh, were great at pointing out errors in uh, your markup record, um, the conversion process to a bit frame, even more so. And of course, um, going back uh, to the economic issue, in many, many uh, organizations, um, there's limited institutional support uh, for experimentation, especially for back office or perceived uh, back office uh, functions. Um, and for people in the African community, uh, or at least uh, some of you, the, the limit on experimentation may have it may extend to implementing an open source iOS and no further. And of course, one of uh, the um, bigger, bigger concerns, concerns is, is that, that even now the experiment uh, should fail. I don't think it will. I think um, the linked data techniques and big frame have enough uh, attraction at uh, the Library of Congress and the likes of OCLC and so on that it won't just go away. Um, and even if it did go away, nonetheless, it's not a question of Mark Lester uh, die, but eventually it will die. But of course, how many of you uh, enjoyed uh, the process of uh, retraining, uh, uh, retraining from ACR2 to, to uh, RDA? Yeah, raise your hands high, high, high. Okay, thank you. But you know, by and large, uh, you know, the training and retraining uh, expenses 
for going to a completely different conceptual uh, model are you know, going to be real. But those difficulties actually turn us back into reasons for adopting or experimenting or at least grappling with a bib frame because in a real sense, uh, and by the way, for uh, anybody, uh, any academic librarians in the audience or who are viewing the recorder, uh, the recording, I'm certainly not I'm certainly not certain you, you all are made of money. money. Of, of course, course not. Um, but um, by and large, public libraries are operating on, uh, under much uh, tighter fiscal uh, constraints. Um, so, and uh, what it means is if big frames exceed frames in terms in terms of, of something that something academic, that academic, academic libraries are can problem with, with, but there's no but there's cost, no effective, cost way effective way for public libraries to, to use, that would be, that would be a problem. Having public, having public library voices in, uh, in the discussion, discussion may help, may help uh, to, uh, to uh, keep those resource constraints in mind. And of course, there's a real reason to experiment um, since of course, it all ultimately ties back to patron service and the way that uh, an academic library serves an undergraduate uh, or a faculty researcher um, or the like has intersections, of course, with public, with public, what public libraries uh, do for patrons. But there are, of course, lots of uh, differences. So there's, uh, of course, a one commonality that everybody wants to do. I look like, like a Google. But... <laughs> that uh, we can't uh, do anything about. But also a very you know, real structural reason to engage um, is to um, avoid a situation where you end up being forced to adopt a bit frame and your options of doing so are uh, potentially tied um, strictly to not a couple large monopoly uh, service uh, providers and record uh, sources. So what do you uh, do? Um, this is not a presentation where I'm coming to you with uh, answers. What I'm instead uh, you know, uh, coming to you with is uh, you know, proposing some courses of action and a concrete way uh, for the Evergreen community to um, start grappling. So first, we do need to keep in mind um, that there are other projects out there um, that are uh, engaging with uh, a big frame in a way that is meant to translate to uh, library service platforms and discovery. So Folio is intentionally architected, not around the mark record, um, but around metadata management uh, based on link uh, data. Um, it does know how to deal with mark records uh, to a point, but it's very much a work in uh, progress. So the next important point that uh, comes uh, from a uh, presentation from um, Stanford, I need to fix uh, that uh, typo, uh, at the BibFrame Update uh, Forum in January, um, where um, a couple comments he made was, um, you can't uh, delete uh, bibs uh, from uh, the uh, user interface at the moment. Now, of course, that was several months ago. It may well have been fixed. Um, so if this were the case in Evergreen, um, I would, I suppose, give direct database access to everybody and then run far away. Um, you know, but you know, but the thing is, is um, it's um, more, it's more mind mind that, mind that well, Folio, Folio is a large and well-resourced well project. It is uh, still itself new and uh, in uh, its um, build-up uh, phase, you know, and its architecture, um, you know, and its primary academic library user base means uh, that um, there can be some oddities reflecting its origins and uh, the route of uh, priorities. Um, and, you know, certain ways of looking at Folio mark as almost an afterthought, which, you know, can make uh, transitioning to it uh, difficult. But that, said, uh, that said, like I said, you know, we're now, you know, in a realm where there are lots of building blocks uh, that uh, we have, av have available to work with. So tools to uh, create uh, and map uh, bit frame data 
now says um, we have our choice of at least two bit at least two bit editors, editors, editors uh, uh, to, to uh, work, work with. with. Um, and they are are all things um, that at the moment with um, you know enough uh, spit in that environment are at the point where we can imagine hooking them up to Evergreen uh, on a prototype uh, basis. So, you know, some of uh, what's, uh, what would be going on in a transition to bib frame um, is already happening uh, anyway. So as ugly as they look, um, mark records over time are uh, creating more and more data, 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 data um, And those are things that can be leveraged uh, now. Um, and the tools are, you know, at the point where we can realistically export uh, BitFrame in RDF to do the publishing end of the linked, uh, 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 larvae linked uh, data pass to see, to see if anybody is uh, biting. biting. And of course, you know, there's always the possibility of uh, figuring out a way to not just nibble around the edges, uh, but, you know, uh, investigate uh, uh, and uh, execute projects um, to, you know, add full bit frame of support. Uh, again, with the caveat of we need to figure out what that means. Um, but can market bit frame coexist in a single system? Um, yeah, that's uh, something that um, with enough uh, elbow uh, grease uh, could be done. Can we uh, completely re-architect uh, Evergreen's metadata model? Um, so, Mike, uh, get on that. I expect the results uh, tomorrow. We did it once. We can do it again. Yeah, but um, you know, but um, uh, but I think that the answer there is more complicated. But where we can get to a soft uh, yes, in you know, in the sense uh, that um, you know, since you know, the core work entity and instant entity and item entities roughly correspond uh, to things that we're modeling already in Evergreen, you know, we do have uh, capabilities um, there. Now, of course, my uh, slide has a question, are we implementing BibFrame? You know, and one of the considerations is that the entire premise of my talk may be not the best way to think about it um, because, you know, BibFrame um, as an as an as an initiative is explicitly at the moment still an experimental project. So the question we are asking ourselves might be, um, what is a good way to improve metadata management for public libraries and consortia in a way that still keeps uh, us uh, hooked into the broader uh, you know library ecosystem. So some uh, specific uh, ideas uh, for Evergreen. Uh, you know, we have uh, the ability uh, via you know, the BitFrame Metamark tools that in principle, we could you know, board on something to start fetching and ingesting uh, BitFrame uh, metadata for ingest into Evergreen. Uh, it would be feasible to do an export without having to go to third parties uh, to um, do that for you. And there are things we can look at to actually attach functionality to the URIs that are increasingly showing up uh, in uh, Evergreen. And you know, one of the things um, that could be interesting is creating a cataloging playground. Because one of the things that is also uh, on my mind is eventually Terry Reese will retire. <laughs> And um, I think there is going to be a real question of ultimately who will pick up mark edit or uh, does a succession plan uh, need to be considered. So this is where I get to what amounts to a call uh, for action. So for next steps, you know, looking into and securing funding via community contributions or grants or the like to make advantage, uh, to enhance Evergreen, to make advantage of uh, linking possibilities available now could be useful, could also you know, improve uh, the patron experience. Uh, but what I would like to, pro uh, you know, to propose, um, and I ran this by the cataloging interest group. Um, so um, 
that uh, nobody uh, throws at tomatoes at me uh, during uh, this uh, presentation for speaking out of term, is uh, to uh, form uh, a bit frame study group uh, within the Evergreen community. And my initial proposal uh, is uh, for something that uh, would be a creature of uh, the interest group, um, arise from uh, the interest group, as uh, well as um, bringing in um, uh, members uh, from the developer, uh, the, uh, the developer pool. So in other words, Mike, you're not, you're not escaping this. Um, but as it ended up as uh, in, uh, initially a limited thing of three to four months where we would meet uh, a couple of times um, and work out um, a sequence both to present a bit frame tools, experiment with them and have structured uh, discussions uh, about what the future of a bit frame in Evergreen might look like, might look like and, and process it all, see, see if, if we can articulate concrete things that bit frame would enable that would make it useful uh, and justifiable to work uh, with, uh, uh, to do the experimentation. And then of course, um, at the same time, reaching out um, to various groups that are already working with and or uh, thinking about BitFrame. So, you know, the uh, big, uh, the best BitFrame list uh, serve, uh, reaching out to the Folio project and so forth. Um, and in part, to fill the gaping hole uh, that I mentioned. So this is, uh, this is a, a slide from a presentation at the same January BitFrame update forum of the current membership of um, the BitFrame and Robbery of Welding Group. Um, so I think a challenge um, that it would, would issue to the Evergreen community uh, is in the January 24, 24 uh, version of this to have the logo of the Evergreen Project and or community members and or especially a public library or consortium that serves the public libraries uh, on this list of logos and making sure that there's public library uh, representation in the big frame uh, process to help ensure that the end result will in fact uh, be useful uh, uh, for public uh, libraries. So thank you uh, for your time and attention. So um, I think at this point we have four minutes of, uh, for questions if uh, there are any. Elaine. Oh, that's not a question, it's not a question. state uh, for you know the room uh, Elaine you know made a very good point that if you don't have it get invited for a seat at the table bring a folding chair and that the evergreen project with its range of public library sizes is uniquely positioned to give a good advice uh, to the BitFrame project thank you Elaine yeah <clears throat> You had listed Koha on your slide um, as another resource. Are they like in a similar situation to the framework? Yeah, they're yeah they're uh, in pretty much exactly the same situation of um, there being a general realization that something should be done, but um, trying to figure out what uh, and how. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.